there's so many of you here, I think that's obvious that color works a lot better than black and white. I think that's one lesson I learned this week. Um, I also want to make a disclaimer that uh, I'm not going to be talking about free will versus predetermination. The whole premise of my class is based on the idea that we do have free will. If you want to talk about how that works with predetermination and when do we actually, you know, when do we, does God's hand play a part in our lives and when doesn't it, when do we really have the choice. If you want to talk about that, I'd love to talk about that after class. Um, but if you want to ask any other questions other than those types of questions, we're more than happy to answer it. Um, so chocolate and vanilla. What? Is it a choice to choose between chocolate and vanilla ice cream? So think about that for a second. Well, you guys are enjoying your chocolate and vanilla ice cream, and we'll, we'll get to it pretty soon. And uh, what about right now? You guys are all sitting here. You guys decided to come to this class. But now that you're here, are you using your free will? No. If you don't know the answer, for sure, in your head, then you should definitely listen to the rest of the class. Um, so and if you do? And if you do, then you'll know if right now you're using free will, your free will or not. Okay. Um, so the basic point of my class is to understand how and when we're using our free will every day and every second of our lives. Um, and by, in order, by when we do understand this, when we know when and how we're using our free will, we're able to change our lives for the better. And we're able to not only be happier, but also make better decisions and know why we're making those decisions. Um, for a healthy life, you have to know when you're making a free will decision and in which direction you're leading. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so why does it matter to have free will? Hope I'll have answered that as well, and you guys will understand. Uh, when you guys do have any questions, please let me know if I'm not making any sense, which probably will happen at some point. So in Pure Chaos, Rabbi Akiva says, How precious is man, for he was created in the image of God. So what does this mean? Our sages tell us that this is describing, essentially, that we were created with free will. Different from all other animals, we have the ability, and I'm going to use this term loosely, I don't want, to, I don't want you to, it's not exactly right, we have the ability to choose. Choose what? I'll, I'll talk about that soon. But we have an ability that animals do not have. Animals do also make choices, but our level of choice is much higher than that of an animals. Animals can choose and we can choose, but what is the difference between their choices and our choices? Why, is, why are our choices considered free will and animals' choices are not? So that's a very important distinction. Um, it, basically, when we use our free will, we either can save the world, beautify it, do amazing things, but also when we don't use our free will, and we don't know we're using it, we can also destroy the world, plunder, and make the world much worse than it is, and do things that we don't want to be doing. But not only that, we don't even know that we're doing something bad. We'll be justifying it in our heads. Uh, King De David also reflects on this great power that we do have, um, and he says that with all God's awesome power, he created man just a little bit less than him. What this also means is that he describes, in essence, that man, as opposed to other animals, have this, has this ability of free will. So it's very important to understand that only man has this ability. What makes us different from animals, we'll discuss soon. Um, also, in, in Rabbi Akiva says also in the same, in chapter 3, in, in chapter 3 of Pure Chiavos, that, that but a greater sign of preciousness to God is that he told us that we were created in the image of God. So what does that exactly mean, that we have this power, and it's great that we know that we have free will. Right? We, have, we have some kind of power just from the knowledge that we have free will. How does that make any sense? Now that I don't have free will, how do I have extra power? And how did it really change anything? So a good example that I like to use is the story of a homeless man. Uh, it's not a true story, it's just a, an example. So there's a, let's say there's a homeless man, and he's walking around with his cart. All he has is a cart. He's always hungry. He's miserable. He's cold. He's always begging for money, just barely getting by. So what do I do? I happen to have a lot of money. So I go, I take $10 million, and I put it in his cart. I put it in his cart for him. So obviously, what, what can he do with $10 million? He can buy food for the rest of his life. He can buy new clothes. He can buy a house. He won't have to work for the rest of his life. He'll be set. You know, granted, a homeless man might not be able to know how to deal with that kind of money. He might waste it on booze. It's another story. But he'll be able to basically save, he'll be able to save his life, right? But what happens? I happen to put it in the bottom of his cart. When we got back to his cart, he threw his blanket over the $10 million. So what does he do? He continues to mope around the city, cold, tired, and hungry, without the knowledge that he has the ability to save his life within his own cart. He's walking around with this amazing power, with this amazing gift that he has. 
But he doesn't do with anything. He doesn't do anything with it. So it's basically like he never had it at all. So this is the same concept with free will. That if we don't know that we had it, it'd pretty much be like we didn't have free will at all. And that's what gives us the power. The knowledge that we do have it. So how, how do we define free will? So this is, this is definitely a time that I want to ask you guys, how would you define free will? Now you guys are eating chocolate and vanilla ice cream over there. Is choosing between chocolate and vanilla ice cream an expression of your free will? It is? You say no, you say yes. You want to say, tell me why? Why do you think yes? I like chocolate, I like vanilla. I have a choice I need to make. Okay. So you're choosing, you, you like one, you like the other, and you decide to go with one. So you made a choice. Okay? Daniel? I said no because it's a preference. Okay. It's, you choose a preference, whichever you prefer at that moment. Okay, so Daniel's probably closer to what I would like to say, is that uh, when you're choosing between chocolate and vanilla, you're exhibiting preference. And how do we know that this is not free will? Because animals also exhibit preference as well. If you have a dog, and you put steak and tuna in front of it, what's the dog going to do? He's going to eat the steak. Did the, did the dog just express free will? No. We learned that the Rabbi Akiva and, and King David both said that, those, that it's something specific to man. So if an animal can do the same thing, it couldn't possibly be free will. So then what exactly is free will? 